everybody and welcome to Boston, Massachusetts. There you can see they're doing, uh, it looks like they're building a building here at 350 Boylston Street. Today is July 31st, 2023. It's about 72 degrees out. It's a beautiful morning and it is about 9.42 a.m. Today I'm going to take a walk down Boylston Street. You can see there's a lot of uh, outdoor restaurants here. Although some aren't open yet since it's early in the morning. So uh, if you were wondering, Boylston Street was originally known as Frog Lane, actually. But it was later named after Ward Nicholas Boylston, a ph ph philanthropist, trying to say that word, a philanthropist and benefactor of Harvard University. Yeah, the weather really couldn't be better right now. We're going to be crossing uh, Berkeley Street in a second. And uh, I, I did the Berkeley Street walk and I already pointed out the old Natural History Museum. But uh, since we're just right on the corner, I'll just point it out again. It's going to be this red building coming up on uh, Berkeley Street. Uh, it was constructed in 1863. I guess this block here was set aside for the Museum of Natural History and the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Okay, so the museum moved in here in 1864. In 1951, it evolved into the Museum of Science and relocated to the current location on the Charles River. That is where the Museum of Science currently is. You can take a look at the facade of the building here. It's currently occupied by RH Boston, which I believe is a high-end furniture store, basically, and gallery. All right, so let's head back down to Boylston Street. And you can see the beautiful views of the uh, buildings from here. What I'm looking at right there uh, in front of the Hancock Tower or the 200 Clarendon Street is uh, 500 Boylston Street, which we will go and walk by. There's another uh, duck boat over there. The Arboretum. Pretty cool. So here's a side view of the old Natural History Museum. Looks like they're trimming the bushes right now. Yeah, so we're coming up to 500 Boylston Street on my left. Which is over here. So it was completed in 1989. Look up at it. It was completed in 1989 and was the setting for the show Boston Legal, where the fictional law firm of Crane, Poole & Schmidt, uh, it's where their Boston office was located on the TV show. Obviously not a real law firm and uh, I'll point and look up at the facade as we walk by very beautiful views of Boston on the street yeah here's the front of 500 Boylston Street oh they have a cow out front from the uh, Cow Parade art installation. There you go. Okay, so as we continue along, I'm gonna cross over so we can take a look at the Trinity Church. And we will be 
crossing over Clarendon Street. I did Clarendon Street uh, a few months ago, so that's also on my channel with the uh, historical information. This is Clarendon here. All right, so I'm gonna cross over here. So we're coming up on the backside of the Trinity Church, which is, uh, I think it's technically located on Clarendon Street. I'm not 100% sure, but um, here you can see the sign. I, I pointed at it. Yeah, sorry, the Trinity Church. This is technically 206, and you can see the Hancock above, the 206 Clarendon Street. I guess it first existed on Summer Street, but burned down in the Great Boston Fire of 1872. The construction of this church was completed in 1877. The building is an example of Richardson, sorry, Rich, Richardsonian Romanesque design, named after its architect, Henry Hobson Richardson. So I just quickly looked this up. This is a statue of Phillips Brooks. Uh, he was an American ep Episcopal clergyman and author. Uh, uh, Long, the rector of Boston's Trinity Church, and briefly Bishop of Massachusetts, he wrote the lyrics to the Christmas hymn, O Little Town of Bethlehem. He is honored on the Episcopal Church liturgical calendar on January 23rd. So we'll continue walking as we can listen to the wonderful sounds of, uh, I believe, uh, bricks being scooped up here. They're doing a lot of renovating around Boston. Here you can see they have uh, basically uh, Copley Square Park here completely fenced up. Sounds like they're rebuilding the sidewalk there. Here's the front of the Trinity Church. So we're in Copley Square now, which unfortunately I can't walk through the park here because he's completely re being renovated. But it was named after painter John Singleton Copley. Before 1883, it was known as Art Square due to its many cultural institutions. Okay, so I hopped over back to the Boylston Street side. And across the street to my right is the Old South Church. This beautiful old church. The church construction was completed in 1873 and is Gothic revival style architecture. The tower has a height of 246 feet and contains the church's 2,020 pound bell. And this way is the Boston Public Library was established in 1848 by an act of the General Court of Massachusetts. The Boston Public Library was the first large free municipal library in the United States. It's one of the largest public libraries in the United States along with the Federal, Federal Library of Congress, New York Public Library, and Harvard University Library. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll cross the street so we can get a closer look at the old South Church.
There you go, you can see the entrance. You can see the Boston Public Library, although it's going to be a little uh, backlit from the sun in that direction. Okay, so we have the Lennox Hotel coming up across the street to my left. You can see the sign up there. The Lennox Hotel was built in 1900 by the owner of New York's Waldorf Astoria. Lucius Boomer. At 11 stories high, it was once the tallest building in Boston. The outside was constructed of white and red terracotta bricks. The hotel is named after Lady Sarah Lennox, the courtier of King George III. I think that just means they courted once, but as far as I can tell, she was never actually his wife. And here we can get a better look at the Lennox. There you can see the terracotta, uh, red brick, terracotta bricks here. Pretty cool, and you can see the Prudential in the background there. Which is the next thing on my list. The Prudential Tower. It's the second tallest building in Boston after 200 Clarendon Street, which was formerly the John Hancock Tower. It was designed and named for the Prudential Insurance Company in 1964. The building is 949 feet tall if you include the radio tower on top. That would actually make it the tallest building in Boston if, you, if that were included. And here we can look at it up looming above with the radio tower. And we will walk right in front of it, but uh, when you're when you're in front of it, it's kind of hard to actually see it because it's so tall. Raising Cane's, I think they're very good, like for chicken sandwiches and. Atlantic Fish Company. Yeah, if you're interested to see what this, um, what it looks like here at night, all you have to do is search my channel, and I do have other uh, videos of Boylston Street at different times of day. All right, so we are approaching the Prudential Tower, the base of it. You can see it up there. And there is a mall inside, I believe, with some restaurants and places to shop. Uh, during, and the Boston teams are doing really well, usually when they reach the finals of their sport. They'll put like go socks or go pats or like go C's on the front of go B's, you know. Um, I've come back so many times. It's, it's really cool. It takes, from what I hear, it takes a really, it's really difficult to, yeah, here's the Prudential Center underneath. It takes a lot of man hours for them to actually set up the windows that way. Um, or at least it used to. I'm sure it still does. I imagine if they use, I wonder if they use smart bulbs, they could just program it. 
to do a pattern on their front building, but I really, that's just oversimplifying it. All right, so this is the front of the Prudential Center. However, you can't really see the tower because it's, I think we angle out a little bit more, but you saw the tower from the other angles. Yeah, here you can see it from this, this angle here. Okay, so I'm walking towards the Heinz Convention Center right in front of me. Um, it was built in 1988 from a design by architects Coleman, McKinnell, and Wood. It replaced the John B. Hines Memorial Auditorium, also a convention center built in 1963 during the Massachusetts Turnpike expansion from Route, 1, Route 128 to the Central Artery. All right. All right, so we're gonna be coming upon the Boylston Street Fire Station, which is a, it's a very iconic fire station, it seems. And I'll cross over so we can see it. So it's across the street here. So the fire station was origi had originally opened in February 22nd, 19 1888, sorry, that's 1888, when Engine Company 33 and Ladder Company 15 were organized into this new firehouse. The building on the left of the firehouse um, used to be home to the Boston Police Station, 16 until 1976. It's currently occupied by the Boston Architectural College. That is the other side of the building, which we'll see. It's a Richardsonian Romanesque style, kind of like the Trinity Church. You can see this side is occupied by the Boston Architectural College. You can barely see it up there. All right, so we're going to cross over the Mass Pike to the final stop. It's a Danker and Donahue garage. As we approach Mass Ave, you can tell we're going over the pike by all the cars going. Although, not at this moment. There we go. back. A little bright in that direction. Anyway, uh, to my left over here, and I'll show you the front, which is uh, the Berkeley College of Music. It was originally called the 
Schillinger. Uh, it was named after Russian-American composer Joseph Schillinger. Hopefully I'm saying that right. It was later renamed Berkeley School of Music by President Lawrence Burke after his son, Lee Elliott Burke. In 1970, it was changed to the Berkeley College of Music. It is the largest independent college of contemporary music in the world. And here is the front. And we're on Mass Ave here. So I guess what they did was he took he took his son's first name, Lee, L-E-E, and moved it to the end of Burke, and he got Burke Lee. It's B-E-R-K-L-E-E. -E. And that was the College of Music. And this is the Performance Center. There we go, Burke Lee. All right, I guess that's gonna do it for this particular walk. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you uh, like my channel in general and haven't done so, make sure to subscribe. And uh, also check out my photography at wayneoxfordphotography.com. Uh, if you'd like to help support my channel, you can buy a print, a mug, a uh, shower curtain, a phone case, you name it. Uh, it's 10 years worth of uh, photographing New England and my travel photos. And anyway, that'll be it for this walk. So thank you so much for coming along and I'll see you next time. Bye.